Hey everyone, I am beyond excited to welcome uh, someone that I consider a friend and a uh, entrepreneur at heart. Uh, I got uh, to the privilege of working with her in several different capacities over the last several years. Uh, one of which I bought one of her businesses, um, and then uh, and now we're working together in a completely different capacity. Uh, my dear friend Kristen Cole. Uh, Kristen, tell everyone a little bit about you. I would love to, and thank you so much for having me today, Wendy. I'm super excited. Um, a little bit about me, so. Um, I am more or less a Boise native. I like to call myself a Boise native. And um, I have a family here in Boise. I've got two little boys, um, married to a really great man. And I, yes, have, um, I'm an entrepreneur at heart. That is true. Um, I think that once you become an entrepreneur, like your brain gets wired differently. <laughs> and then, <laughs> then you just like can't stay away from businesses. Um, but I started and ran an event company in the Boise area called Soundwave Events. Um, also started and ran and then sold to Wendy, a transaction coordinating company in the real estate industry. Um, and that was a great experience too. And currently I have transitioned um, out of my business into a position at Silver Creek Realty um, doing business development for the brokerage. So um, doing some entrepreneurship type things for a business that's not mine, which is kind of a new adventure. Yeah, yeah, it's always it's always interesting to see that transition happen. I mean, I've kind of been, you know, in corporate America and then out again and a little bit back in, but most of my journey has been entrepreneurial. Even even part of that, um, I worked like for the school district for a while because I was a little paranoid about how my children were going to do it in public school. So I felt yeah. like I should helicopter uh, into their lives through working at the school. <laughs> yeah, um, but Love it. so you do you do a little bit of all the things, I think. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's so true. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. So what made you want to go into business development for someone else's company? You know what? So that is a bigger question than just one answer, I think. So um, running my own company is an amazing experience. I mean, truly, it's made me who I am. There is no part of Soundwave that isn't so wrapped up in my soul. And just the, just, you know, equipping me with so much resiliency and skills and relationships and connections. Um, I, I don't know how to say this in a nice way. I think I got bored. I think mm -hmm. I got bored. So, um, you know, running this company, it's been great, but I'm definitely like, okay, what can I do? How can I make this better? How can I make this run smoothly? And I got to a point where I, I kind of peaked. Like I got to a place where I was like, okay, I, I've done what I can do here. Like now it's time for someone else to do some work in this company. And my husband actually still owns a sound wave. Technically I still own it too, but, um, <laughs> <laughs> but I stepped down earlier this year to come to Silver Creek. And, you know, I remember two years ago, um, just really like going inside of myself and saying like, I'm ready for something new. I'm ready for something new, but it wasn't time. And that's the answer I got. It's not time. And so I said, okay, well, when it's time, let's make it really obvious. And so earlier this year, when um, the owner at Silver Creek reached out to me and he said, listen, your name keeps coming to my mind. And I don't know why, but I have this position um, opening up and I, I just keep thinking of you. So I know you run a business, so I don't even know why I'm calling you, but are you interested? And it was this moment like, I think the door's opening. I think I just have to walk through it. Um, and I'm, you know, moved from one small business, um, ultimately to another small business, another local company. And um, I, I was just excited to be able to contribute my skills in a different way. And um, also really excited to transition back to an industry that I know a lot about, um, but hadn't worked. I've worked somewhat actively in real estate, but not super actively in real estate. Um, so to be able to combine like, you know, these two parts of my life um, together was really exciting. That is so awesome. So awesome. I love that you are able to go, hmm, 
there's something not right. Everything is great. Don't get me wrong, but I feel like there's something else that needs to be brewing. And that's such a hard place to come from or be in um, because you feel, uh, at least for me, I had, you know, when when I've really wanted to transition moving, you know, not necessarily real estate, but moving to some type of coaching where I could mentor and help others uh, do what do what I've been able to do you know, it, it almost feels ungrateful there for a minute. You're like, oh, why can't I just be happy and satisfied with, with all of the success that I've already built? Yeah, I've totally had that feeling so many times. Like I have this amazing company. I'm surrounded by the most incredible people who I love. Like they're my people, you know? And I'm like, why, yeah, why am I not just content to just keep showing up and keep working hard and keep doing good things. Like, um, but yeah, I think sometimes our soul just like, just wants to take us somewhere else. Like, I don't know. There's like a pull. Yeah. And I think it is the epitome of what an entrepreneur is always looking for. You know, they're always looking to be better, do better, know better. And anytime we can transition from one position to another, there's always that opportunity for growth. So I think it's just something that you either have or you don't, you know, that that drive and that curiosity. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. That's so true. And exactly (laughs) like what I have been looking for. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. So what are, I mean, obviously you've run a couple of different businesses and now you're doing business development, which falls into that lead marketing line for any business. So what are some of the habits that you have that have helped you be successful in everything that you've done so far? That is a great question. So for me, I am really big on organization. So I, the first thing I guess I'll say is you've got to show up, right? And not just walk through the door, right? Right. Like you've got to show up completely to whatever it is you're doing. And even in my business at Soundwave, when I was feeling, you know, like a pull to something else, oh, I kept showing up, right? I kept putting my best foot forward, working hard, you know, the commitment, dedication. So showing up kind of encompasses all of that. The next piece for me is being organized. So For me, that starts with what are the needs? What are the goals? So immediately when I came to Silver Creek, you know, I'm looking at our system as a whole saying, what what would make this company even better? Like what would make this better for the people we serve, which ultimately are our real estate agents that are here at the brokerage. And then you start compiling those lists and those ideas. And then you've got to focus, right? And that is hard, especially I think for creatives and entrepreneurs, like um, sometimes I've said my life would be a lot easier if I didn't have so many ideas and so many (laughs) things that I wanted to do. Like I want to do all the things, right? But you have to be able to look at the big picture and say, okay, what's going to make the biggest impact next? What needs to happen next? So it might not be the easiest thing on my to-do list, which I'm really committed to my to-do list, (laughs) but what is going to bring us closer to our goal, even if it's going to take an extended amount of time, multiple steps, you know, what's going to get us where we need to go next. And then you pick that next thing to work on and you focus and you get it done. Um, I think also we can be prone to, you know, like I want to do part of this, but I don't want to do all of it. Right. Like, so really just being able to say, okay, I'm going to get this done. I'm going to take it off my list so I can move on to my next, you know, exciting idea or exciting thing to work on. So those are some of the habits. The other thing I think for me, and this is based on, I guess, just my experience in my business. We, like any entrepreneur, we're going to have highs and lows. And three years ago, I had a pretty intense low, um, just mostly related to burnout, honestly. And so something that's really important for me, for my success, is to have really good boundaries and work-life balance. And that is a hard conversation to have with entrepreneurs because we're so passionate, we're so excited, and we love work. I think that's pretty true for most entrepreneurs. Like, 
I don't work because I have to. I work because I want to because it fuels me. Um, but if I don't have firm boundaries and have like, okay, I'm done working today. I'm not going to do any more today. Then I get into a place where I'm out of whack and then I start to deteriorate in all the areas of my life. So right. that's a big one for me as well. Yeah. I'm sure that was a really uh, important lesson for you to learn, especially with Soundwave, where your you and your husband are in business together. This is a family business. It's from home. Like all those lines start to really blur when you're okay. doing that. Yep, um, we moved into an office space in 2012. We'd run the company previously for three or four years out of our third bedroom of our town hall. And, you know, I have DJ gear like strewn all throughout our hall and our entryway, like it's everywhere. Um, you know, DJ vans parked outside and moving to have like a set workspace was really key for us. But it, the lines were still blurred, right? Because my husband and I would go on a date and like, we just talk about the business because that's what we, that's our common ground, right? Um, we always worked really well together, but um yeah, it, it can get a little tricky. And I remember when I hit this low, um, I, I had this moment of like, okay, if I don't want to do this anymore, like if I'm ready to move on to something new, if this, I, I say if this business has worked me too hard, but it's my business. So really it was me working myself too hard. How do I make a change? How, you know, if this was a job, I would quit but I can't quite do that because like, how do I do that and not divorce my husband? Right. Like I want to keep him. I like him a lot. Um, so that was an amazing, like one of the best experiences of my whole life. Like it was so hard. Like the next two months or so that followed um, were really, really challenging and intense, but it created for us some really good boundaries with the business and a really good picture of how do we get this business to a place where it can function optimally, whether or not we're there or whether or not we need to change other staff and whether the storms that a business might see. And that was like, it was incredible. Like I have such positive feelings about it. Yeah, I would love for you to dig in just a little bit and talk about some of the processes you put in place or some of the tools that you implemented in order to make that transition. You know, when you're trying to take the person that really is the glue, uh, which I imagine was was the role you served in that business yep. and hand that out, delegate it out to other people. Like, what did that look like? Yes. Ooh, this is my favorite. This is such a fun experience for me. So. Um, it's, it's pretty gritty, like when you're in it, but so the first thing of course that you need to do is you need to have your organizational chart, right? And yes. your name might be on multiple places in that organizational chart because you might be doing multiple jobs and that's okay. But then for each, um, little job that's on your chart, you have a process, how you do the job, you need checklists that are related, you know, things that you need to do specifically day by day, weekly, monthly, annually, whatever it is to keep that position um, running really efficiently and successfully. And then you really need to write a training manual. And when I took this position at Silver Creek, it was right at the time when I was just finishing up every training manual at Soundwave. So every position at Soundwave has, this is how you do the job, these are the responsibilities of the job. Um, this is how it's lined out in a, in a timetable, like, you know, the checklist piece of that. This is when these things need to happen. And all of that is automated. And so, you know, having everything written out is great, but how do you automate, right? How do you use systems and tools that are available to automate pieces of this? Yeah. Simple example. So at Soundwave, our client coordinator, okay? So she's responsible for keeping track of all the incoming leads, um, quotes, booking, um, and then the, you know, the whole process for a client from when they book until their event happens. And so what does she need to do every day, right? Well, she needs to reply to her emails. She needs to follow up with leads. She needs to check the mail, like little things, right? Um, 
she needs to run some statistics once a month maybe. And so all of this is set up for her in a way that she doesn't have to remember anything in her brain because our brains are pretty powerful, but they're not that powerful, right? Right. So for example, the basic of the basic, every day she gets a reminder in her email to go and check the mail. It's not rocket science, right? right. One less thing that she has to remember, like, okay, what do I need to do today? We need to check the mail because there might be contracts in the mail, right? And so she, I mean, throughout the whole year, things are programmed in her Google Calendar with a notification in her email so she remembers what she needs to do every day. And okay. for her, it makes it simple. It allows her to focus on the clients and her interactions with them instead of like, who do I need to follow up with today? Or like, what do I need to do today? Like, we don't need to use brain space for stuff like that. Yeah. And um, let's focus on really what's going to generate money for the company or, you know, client satisfaction. So that has been a really key piece of just the automation. And so, you know, with that, of course, you know, if you're in a client position, you're, you know, you want to act, you know, utilize a CRM software something that's going to automate, again, my favorite word, right, automation, how can we automate what needs to happen? Um, I remember back in the day before we were using CRM, um, which if anyone's listening and you don't know what that is, it's your client management. So what's your um, system for staying in touch with uh, your leads and clients, um, both when they're in the lead category, when they're actually a client, and then after the fact, like, What's your process and follow-up plan? Um, so I remember 4th of July, this was years ago, and I realized, like, I hadn't followed up with leads in, like, I don't know, weeks. And I, like, had this panic moment. And so I told my family, I was like, I'm so sorry. Like, I need two hours. Like, I'm not going to be able to have fun tonight at fireworks if I don't follow up with these leads right now. Right. And so I sat down on my computer for two hours. I had to find all the leads in the email, right? Yeah. And follow up emails to all of them because I hadn't talked to them. And so those are things like I didn't need that stress or to use my brain space for like that panic. Systems, processes, automation is what makes this um, easy so I can focus on things that are really important. Yeah. Absolutely. I love that. And I definitely am of the same mindset, probably not nearly as detailed. So now I have all these new ideas. And oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> but it's good because I'm in a, you know, I'm in a very, I'm in the ideal space for creating that. So I, I have my employee, we are just starting to put some processes and procedures in place. We haven't started a training manual yet because we're just the two of us. So it's a lot of yep. back and forth, but you know, there's a lot of good ideas that I am so excited that you shared um, that I can use myself and I'm sure so many other people can use them too, for sure. Oh, so it's made a huge difference. Like it's just the check, the checklists ultimately is what it is. Like, you know, take out the guesswork of what needs to be done for, yeah. a, for an employee because most of the time, 98% of employees, they want to do a really great job and they want to have job satisfaction, they want to be appreciated, and they want to meet expectations, right? Sure. But if the employer is not making it easy for them to do that because there's not clear instructions or clear processes, that is where some contention can come into place, either from the employee to the employer or vice versa. And so if we as, you know, if, if we have an employee, and of course with your first employee, right? Like this is all new, right? You're right. kind of this and you're and you should use her to help build it right because Absolutely. she's going to have good insights to that too as she gets really digs into things but it just creates such a more successful situation for the relationships and the business i love that i love that uh do you mind sharing some of the tools that you use i mean i know what i use in real estate but that's very super specific you know yep. what are some of the tools you use outside of that for just any business yeah um, Google Calendar is one of my favorite tools for reminders, daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, whatever. For example, um, at Soundwave, you know, we want to reevaluate our social media plan quarterly. Well, I'm not going to remember that. So you can go into Google Calendar, you can make yourself an event, right? 
um, review social media plan or yeah. create, create our next 30 days of content, whatever it might be, and schedule that as, as an event. When you open up the event page itself, add a notification. Um, you want your notification to be an email um, so that you have a reminder outside of just like a pop-up on your phone yeah. um, that's going to live, right? It's going to stay there. You're not going to swipe it away so that you right. can be reminded, oh, this week I need to carve out some time to work on our social media posting plan. So my girls at Soundwave, their calendars, um, and you can even create a secondary calendar that's just these reminders, and you can actually hide that calendar from your daily view so that you don't see all those reminders, but you're getting the, the email in your email inbox, right? Um, so that's something that has been fantastic. Another tool um, that I love is called HoneyBook, and this is a really fantastic CRM um, for lead follow-up or client follow-up. Um, it's also a great platform uh, if you're doing contracts or taking payments. Um, I actually integrated HoneyBook here at the brokerage for my partner and I. Um, you know, one, one of the roles here at Silver Creek for me is recruiting um, other agents to Silver Creek. And so I need to stay in touch with people, right? It's fine if I call someone on a phone, but if I don't actually follow up with them consistently, that's it's a wasted phone call. Like it's totally. not going to lead to anything. So HoneyBook is a great tool. Um, you can create different action plans. So say for example, I have a new hire and I'm like, okay, what do I want to do when I hire someone new? I want to send them a card in the mail. I want to connect them, you know, if they were referred by another agent. Um, I want to send them an email with next steps. And then I want to touch base with them in 45 days and in six months and in the year. So you can create a custom follow-up plan for your client, and then um, I can add that onto the person, and then it'll create tasks for me as they come due. And it their follow-up system, I've not seen anything else like it. They do that so well. And honey, it's 400 bucks a year. It's super cheap. Like as far as CRM goes, it's great. So that has been hugely helpful. Um, there's other tools that I've used, like T-Sheets we use for event scheduling and payroll. T-Sheets has, um, they're a local Idaho startup that actually got purchased by Intuit. And they've got a lot of really cool tools. And so that's a good one to check out. Um, and then, I mean, simple tools like Calendly. So we think about time saving, right? And how valuable your time is as an entrepreneur or as a mom or as an employee, or as a human, like, right? Like, time is so important. And so, um, Calendly, instead of like, oh, hey, yeah, like, what is your schedule like? Oh, yeah, let me check. Oh, looks like I'm free on Thursday. Oh, okay, cool. How's one? Ooh, no, I can't do one. Okay, perfect. How's two? Shoot, you know what? Thursday's not going to work for me. What about next Tuesday? Oh, yeah, let me check my calendar. Like, we know this is how it happens, right? Totally. So, say, you know what, let me shoot you a link to my calendar. You can pick a time that works for you, which Wendy and I actually did this morning. It saved Wendy time and it saved me time and it got the job done quickly. So um, any of those little tools that we can use to maximize time, I think are hugely valuable. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So as you move through your day-to-day -day life, I know that that work-life balance is something that is, uh, first of all, uh, kind of a myth in some ways, um, in the in the way that traditional people think about it. But I do believe in work life balance. I just think that that work life balance is very personal to each person. Um, sure. So, what are some of those? Speaking of balance, some of those non negotiables things that you're like, nope, this is happening. This is important. I mm -hmm. I have to achieve this. I mean, I think that can happen on both sides, totally. right? That happens in work and it happens in family. Before I dive into that, I would, if it's okay, I just want to share like my view on work-life balance. We're never going to have a perfect balance, right? When I'm at work, I'm not, honestly, I'm not really thinking about my kids, right? Mm -hmm. I know that they're safe. They're where they need to be. They have care providers, right? They're at school or whatever. When I'm at home, I try really hard not to think about work. 
Um, and I think for me, that's what work-life balance is, is like having the boundaries yeah. so that I can say, when I'm home, I'm going to be home. When I'm at work, I'm going to be at work. Or when I'm home, I'm going to put my phone away for 45 minutes, right? For those of us that like have things coming in or have client needs, I'm going to put my phone away for 45 minutes and really focus on what's happening here and right. let people here be seen and heard and valued. And then I'll pick up my phone again and I might carry it around with me for the rest of the night. But so non, that's like my preface. My non-negotiables are um, for me in this season of my life and one of the reasons why I decided to take like a nine to five, eight to four job is because my kids are in a really important, um, just really important stage. They're seven and 10. And so for me, they're my non-negotiable, right? If, if there's a need with my kids, that's going to come first for me yeah. um, in a scale, right? Sure. Like there are times when I'm like, okay, you have a sore throat today. Let's see if you can hang out with so-and-so. Like I'm not necessarily going to stay home for that, right? Sure. If an urgent need for my kids, everything else can wait. And, and unfortunately, I'm in a workplace where that really works. Another non-negotiable for me is solid um, one-on-one quality time with my husband every week. Yeah. We need that so much. Even if, honestly, like, yes, he's been working out of town a lot, and he was home yesterday um, for one day. And so I took a half a day off work yesterday and so that he and I could spend time together. And you know what we did? We ran errands. Yeah. And that was okay. Like, it didn't need to be, like, this romantic dinner and like, you know, whatever, like it was he and I together catching up, spending time together, laughing, you know, joking around, whatever our, you know, how our little intricacies are. And that worked for me. So um, on the work side, my non-negotiable daily is are the client's needs met, yeah. right? So are my urgent emails replied to, are my urgent texts and phone calls returned? And that is my focus point. Because taking care of what you have is always going to be more important than bringing more in, right? Yeah. Like if we can't take care of what we have, we can't bring more in. And yeah. so my number one. Um, side projects can wait. Um, lead generation, while extremely important, can wait um, if and until my urgent in front of me, client needs are met. So yes. those are a couple of mine. Yeah, I love that. I love that. So in all of the chaos of the family and life and work and, and, and <laughs> uh -huh. how do you stay focused? How do you, you know, do you have some uh, routines or things that you do on a regular basis to keep you know, your mind on work at work and your mind on family at, at home. How does that work for you? It's always a juggling act, right? Mm -hmm. um, I think that like, first I just made a decision, you know, like, and it's not always perfect, right? My kids call me while I'm at work and I'm gonna chat with them for a few minutes, right? Totally. And yeah, sometimes a client is gonna call or, you know, for me, it's a real estate agent is going to call with a need at seven at night. And like all of these people are important to me. Um, but for me to keep saying there are things that I need to do for me. Right. And so one of those is exercise that I guess that would be one of my non-negotiables. Right. Um, I, I can't function if I'm not getting cardio and I've never like been one really throughout my life to exercise a ton. Um, until three years ago when I found out that when I exercise, especially if I'm like running or on the elliptical and I can zone out, um, it's like a meditative practice in a way. Totally. Um, and my body just feels better. And I think that's happened as I get, as I get closer to 40. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I have to exercise to sleep good. Okay. Good to know. Right. <laughs> well, that when I was that. right? So that is super important to me. Um, I'm also very dedicated to my nighttime routine, which isn't anything special. Like I'm, 
I'm not, well, I'm like a hyper achiever when I'm at work and I'm like very, like I do this and then I do this and I do this. When I'm at home, I'm generally like pretty chill and like, I don't know, let's see what happens. Like I don't necessarily need to plan anything. And like, I'm not one who has like, I journal before bed and then I meditate for four and a half minutes and then I do eight seconds of stretching. Like I don't have a set thing like that, right. but I like kind of tune inward um, as I'm getting ready for bed. Um, sometimes we'll watch maybe a little show on TV. Maybe we won't, but it's like this unwinding time. And I, I have sensed that the nights that I'm like not giving myself that good hour, um, mm -hmm. I don't sleep as good. Like I yeah. need this like, you know, work up, um, to just be able to rest. So yeah. those are a couple of things that really help me. Um, I generally also, I don't plan things on the evenings during the week. Um, kind of for that reason, it's also kind of for my children because if, I don't know if we have things going on, it just throws off the schedule for the whole week. And so I'm, I often say no. Um, if it's a Monday through a Thursday, something in the evening, unless it's really important, I'll say no to it. Um, so that's been something for my own mental health that has really helped. Yeah, I love that. I think self-care is so, so important for us entrepreneurs and to be able to recognize those keys of, you know, uh, exactly what it is that, that makes your body and your mind healthy. Um, you know, I know same with me, exercise is just, uh, just really a non-negotiable, uh, it doesn't mean that I'm, you know, winning any Olympic medals, but I have to move my body, you know, that like, that's yeah. just important. Yeah. Um, and yeah. it's so different. It's different for everyone, right? Like what does self-care look like? Well, I don't know. Like that's so different. Um, we all have different needs and different demands time. So it's, I think there is this inward journey of, you know, discovering like, what does this mean for me? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So if you were going to give one piece of your most valuable advice to an entrepreneur, what would that be? The advice I give most, and it's mostly to new entrepreneurs, but it applies to any entrepreneur regardless of the stage of your business, um, any time that you have the opportunity for growth. And it's a quote that I share, and I maybe almost every day. Um, and it is, jump and the net will appear. Yeah. Jump and the net will appear, jump and the net will appear. Being an entrepreneur is terrifying. Yeah. Like the day, like when we moved into our office, and I didn't say this earlier, but Previously to starting Soundwave, I worked here at Silver Creek. I did admin here and um, was going through my broker training and all the things. And then we decided to go full time with our company. That was part time at the time. And we signed a lease on an office. And I was six months pregnant with our second baby. And I was sitting in the office. It was just me at the time. And I would look around and say, the phone's going to ring right <laughs> right like this is gonna work right oh. at that time that is I had read a book and that quote was in there jump in the net will appear and I would repeat myself or repeat that to myself over and over because I was fetching scared <laughs> right and yeah. like, I know like any entrepreneur has felt this way like I hope this is gonna work like I have a family to support I have goals I have you know whatever it might be um, and then again, that happened to us when we hired our first full-time employee. Like, I have to pay her all year. Right. <laughs> like, not just when I have a closing or not just when we have events. Like, she yeah. expects to get a paycheck every month. Jump and the net will appear. And then right. it goes back to what I said earlier. You got to show up. And so those are the two things I would say. Jump and the net will appear and show up. And yeah. not just, like, walk through the door, like I said earlier, right? You got to show up. You got to be all in. You got to work hard. You got to use your ideas and get out of your comfort zone. But when you show up, your net appears. Yeah. I think it's really fascinating. I've definitely run into those entrepreneurs that are like, you know, well, I started this because I want to be able to make my own schedule. And I'm, I'm just like, I'm not a morning person and I want to be able to sleep in. And I'm like, 
you are on the <laughs> wrong journey, honey. <laughs> like, uh -huh. You should get a swing shift job, not an entrepreneur journey. Like it's right. very different. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's the real deal. And you know what's so funny? I realized the other day, um, <laughs> my husband's like always been an entrepreneur, like since he was 22 or something crazy. And he had me take this quiz. I was probably like 23. And he's like, ooh, take this quiz. It'll tell you like how likely you are to be successful as an entrepreneur. Yeah, like I failed that quiz. <laughs> like it was not, I was like, ooh, I don't know if I'm cut out for this. Like I'll stay working at Wells Fargo or I'll work at, you know, later to Silver Creek. And then I was like thrust into entrepreneurship and like the best. Yeah. Like to be able to like harness all this creativity you didn't even know you had and to, sh again, what do I keep saying? Show up. Like, I'm showing up for my clients. I'm providing this amazing experience and really taking care of people. And like things are happening. Like another realization I had was a few years into the business when I was like, oh my gosh, reap what you sow. That works. Right. <laughs> that works. Like, and I was so excited. Like, <laughs> and like you can't replace that feeling. It's so great. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, totally sleeping in. I don't know, setting your own schedule. Yeah, I set my own schedule. It's I work a lot. Right. <laughs> but you do right. it because you love it. You're passionate. Yeah. Yeah. I I absolutely 100% agree. I just I can't imagine you know doing life any other way than than as an entrepreneur. And I just I've never struggled with you know since I've been on this journey. Never struggled with. I don't want to get up today. I just want to like, I've never once thought I should sleep in. I, I don't have any meetings today. I'm like, no, that's not even <laughs> like, it just doesn't cross my mind. So it's a very foreign concept to me. <laughs> yep. It's yeah. I think that, you know, a lot of entrepreneurs dive in and they're like, yeah, this isn't what I thought it was going to be. Yeah, that's yeah. fair. <laughs> Probably yeah. isn't. But Absolutely. that's why you know, like this work-life balance and these, you know, non-negotiables like are really important, I think, for the success of your business and just for your general well-being in life. Um, you need both. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So tell everyone what is the best way to reach you? The best way to reach me? I would love to connect. Um, you can reach me um, through email at um, Kristen, which is K-R-I-S-T-I-N, at silvercreekrealty.com. Um, I'm also on Facebook. Um, Kristen Cole is my name. Feel free to message me or add me as a friend. Um, also on Instagram, I've got my personal Instagram, um, which is sunshine period in period Idaho, sunshine in Idaho. Um, and then I've also got a more business focused Instagram I'm going to share the name, but I'm going to change it, I think, tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. We'll fix it. And uh, Today, it is um, Business by Kristen, and then it's going to be changing to um, Success by Design, um, but I'm, there might be some periods in there. So I'll, um, I'll send that to you, Wendy. <laughs> okay, sounds good. So, yeah, I'd love to connect. I'd love to have these conversations. Awesome. Awesome. And my very last question, which is one of my favorite, because I find it so interesting, the different ways that people uh, look at this, but how do you give back? Oh, I love it. So my life and my mission is people. So my personal mission is love them, see them, hear them, be there for them. And so my biggest way I give back is through time and love and conversations and support and just being there. Um, there are other like local organizations that we like to um, be part of that I'm really passionate about. We've at Soundwave we give back to a lot of local nonprofits um, through in-kind donations and um, you know, comping event services and things like that for their fundraisers. Um, but for me as a person, as a human, right, it's all about love. It's all about time and acceptance and just being there. So that's, that's my take on it. I love that. I love that so much. It has been an honor to have you come 
chat with me a little bit on the My Wim Life show, sharing some wisdom, humor, inspiration, and motivation with all of my people. And I, I just you. can't thank you enough. Oh, thank you so much for having me. You're amazing. All right. I will talk to you soon. Awesome. Have a great day. Thank you so much for tuning in to the My Wim Life show today. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss a moment of the goodness.